Hey GH peeps, welcome back to my channel where we talk all things General Hospital. Today's late night review is for Monday guys. We knocked it out. We are done. Whew. We can breathe. It's over. Yes, <laughs> we got the rest of the week to look forward to. It is April 29th, 2024. I hope you guys had a pretty good Monday. I had a very long Monday and I'm going to even have an even longer Tuesday. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to post tomorrow, guys. As you know, I am posting very late today because I worked late and then I had a lot of stuff I had to get done at, in, in my house. But, um... Anywho, I do hope to do at least a, a short one tomorrow, but I'm not going to make any promises, but I just wanted to put that out there. Anyhow, how was GH GHing for you guys? Any highs? Any lows? Any, oh my goodness, there they go again. Rug burn and 4.5 man or 4 to 5 man or 45 man or whatever you want to call Mr. Long Neck Lavery. I desk action honey desk action was going on they've upgraded they didn't off from the floor to the to the from the to the wall to the to the table i was like okay okay we 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 doing it we doing we doing things now we we moving on okay and guys i'm sorry they still as hot as ever I, i'm just i be clutching my imaginary pearls just watching them together it is Mm, it feels good. I'm not going to lie. It's good and juicy. Now, to the flip side of that. Since they're Kim testing him with Jordan, this is going to be a no. This is going to be an automatic no. No, I don't want him going through a thing, an epiphany, and all of a sudden he don't want to keep slutting it out with Nina. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Jordan don't deserve that. So she going to have to deal with... Portia sloppy seconds from Curtis and now she's gonna have to deal with Nina sloppy seconds. She is a queen, honey No people GH writers Anybody out there in the GH hemisphere? <laughs> we are collectively saying and I hope my my a GH yeah peep y'all let me know Collectively, hopefully we are pushing this out no, we will not be having Jordan take nasty, sloppy second. She already had to take Porsches. And for free bike, no, she did. Yes, she did. And that was her man first. And then she had to kiss on him after he'd been kissing and all that. No, I don't want that for Jordan. I don't want that for Jordan. But anyway, guys, please leave your highlights and comments in the comment section. You guys know I like your highlights and your comments, so keep them going, please. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button and hit that subscription button. But anywho, guys, let's just talk about it, okay? So this, uh, we're going to title this one, <laughs> The Regret Me Not, okay? Because why, girl, why, Jocelyn, really? Okay, I understand, I, you know, being, 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 anyway, let's just talk about it. So, Christina is doing a preg prego workout. You know, she's getting her walk on with her little weights. And, of course, the body's telling her to sit her butt down and eat a donut. <laughs> and she runs into Dex. And, of course, Dex confirms that, yes, Sonny did send him out to unalive Cyrus in the hospital. And I'm like, so we just we just telling everybody now. It's like, you know, pretty soon there's not going to be anybody to be on the jury stand. Because <laughs> everybody going to know. Um, and she, of course, Christina is shocked, but she's starting to add to it. She's starting to add things up. Not the correct things, but she's adding something up. And Christina does ask him about the differences and changes in Sonny's um, behavior. And Dex is like, you know what? There, you know, there has been a change in his behavior now that I think about it. Really? <laughs> now that you think about it? <laughs> and that, um, he confirms that, yeah, that... Sonny has been more violent and more, you know, volatile and more paranoid. And Dex mentions that Sonny was paranoid about having a traitor. And I'm like, no, actually, he was not paranoid about having a traitor because he did have a traitor. You, bro. You were the traitor, bro. You were the traitor, bro. He wasn't paranoid. You think what you really did was right? <laughs> you were sent out to 
destroy him. And oh, because I changed my mind, I'm a good guy now. Boy, bye. Anyway, um, Christina thinks it started with when Ava moved in, or actually around the Puerto Rico time. And I'm like, honey, it was going on way before that. As far as I, it, I, I personally feel like he's been being poisoned ever since he came back from Nixon Falls and Valentine's seen him canoodling with Nina. Because <laughs> he's been making some bossy, he's been making some not none boss moves since he came back from Nixon Falls. I think we should rewind this back to Nixon Falls. Yeah, because when he came back, mm -mm, been making some, some uh, lame moves since then. But anyway. Josh shows up, of course. Now she's up there jogging. You know, got the little sweat glistening and all that. You know, making sure everything okay because she sees the tension in the air. And you know what I'm saying. And I gotta give it to Jocelyn, okay? I just, I, I, I feel you on apologizing, but I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> I would have been like, I'm sorry. You know, I, I would have said what she look. look I'm maybe just going to get into it. So Josh, um. Christina lets her know that everything's cool and that Dex was just confirming what Joss said was true. And Joss was like, you know, she just wishes, she says, you know, keeping it real, I wish this wasn't going on. I wish this wasn't true. And I shouldn't have told you like that. She's right. She, she, you know, in her, in, in her personal self, yeah, you're right. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't want that. You shouldn't want this to be true. But, it wasn't like you just was like, yeah, I can't wait to tell you, Christina. No, you, you, you know, you were kind of cornered and yeah, you were a little intoxicated. And sometimes people just say things when they're intoxicated. Hell, ad grown as adults still do that. But anyway, um, where was I at? Yep, and, um, but Kim, uh, but it's just like an odd quietness after she tells her that she shouldn't have, you know, said it like that, and Christina leaves, and then Joss goes, I guess this is the Joss Apology Tour, guys, that's what we should have named this title, Joss, not forgive me not, but Joss Apology Tour, because then she apologizes to Dex for being a goody titty and uh, telling him, you know, I'm so happy you're joining the PCPD, and they're going to be so lucky to have you, and I'm like, so you really think... Jocelyn, I would not be so much worried about Sonny making Dex's life hard in the police, you know, in the police, st in the police thing. I'd be more worried about his brothers, you know, his so-called boys in blue not trusting his ass. I mean, Jason can't do nothing about them coming after him or looking at him like he's shysty. No matter what Anna and her two uh, two weeks oh, in this over says, I will be so. I, I'm not. I'm guys. I don't want to see Dex in a cop uniform. Okay. We have enough Dudley Doo-Doo's, Dudley Doo-Force, enough Dudley Doo's. We have Chase. We don't need a Dex. We don't need a Dex. We just don't. We don't need a Dex, y'all. I'm sorry. I, I don't, why are we keeping him? What is the point? He ain't nobody, he's nobody's kid. Why is he still here? It's got to be something more than Joss's boyfriend. I mean, we have enough legacy families. We can pull a legacy family up that, you know, has history. I'm just not, I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't, if Dex is not, what is Dex's storyline? A cop? I don't want to see that. I don't, we don't need, we need more doctors. It's general hospital. We need more hospital people. Let them go, let them go be a surgeon or something else. Not a surgeon, but you know, I don't know. But she admits that she's no perfect angel, and she didn't mean to come off like that. And, and I guess we're going to see them back together. And this is the only reason why he's coming back, is so he can be Joss's sex toy. I'm sorry, love toy. That's just not... Anyway, guys. So we're going to go to Aurora. And Drew is having a meeting with Willow and Michael. And tells Willow... And ask Willow, would she like to be, um, Drew's on this whole entire health kick initiative. Well, um, you know, him and Nina might be something good. Seems like they bounce good ideas off of each other. But anyway, he, um, mentions a non-profit by the name of New Tomorrow Institute. 
and they need a spokesperson and he is thinking that willow would be a great candidate because you know she it's about cancer and you know she has a story her own testimony of the, um getting bone marrow and she could personalize the message and Michael brings up, you know, you know, Willow's kind of a private person, and Drew understands and doesn't want to bring, you know, put Willow in an uncomfortable situation, but brings up that, you know, she would give her time to think about it, but she would be a good advocate for it because of her own personal walk with it. <clears throat> bring up, Willow brings up the fact that yes, why she does value, and she looks at she looks at Michael, why I do value. Here he goes again, overstepping. <laughs> That's how she was like. Here he goes again, overstepping. <clears throat> While I do value my privacy, I do feel like I got so much back from the gift that my great auntie Liso gave me. And guys, when she said, okay, I love me some Liso. She is bad and good. She's she's like one of those you can love to hate her kind of people. Mm. But I thought, well, are they going to bring Lisa because they mentioned her? I hope they do show up Lisa because where has Lisa been? Where is Lisa at? Nina needs her auntie. Anyway, she brings up the, the beautiful gift that her auntie gave her and how in that gift she got her children back. She got to be a, a wife again to her husband and she would like to, you know, help anybody get back what they lost. And I'm like, well, that's some deep stuff. And we got to play it back, right? Michael was already talking about Willow doing charity work. That's why when they were talking about it later at the um, Metro Court, I was like, I would have been like, well, you said you wanted to do charity work. You ain't got to jump into anything Lila did. You can start your own thing, baby. What do you want to do? You know, if this is what you want to do. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be pretty interesting. But while they're having this meeting, who comes in the room? Nina. Just walks right on in. <laughs> because I was sitting there, I wrote down, because that's what her and Drew do. They just walk in each other's office. There's no knocking. We just walking into each other's offices. And she sees Willow and starts to <laughs> whisper stutter. <laughs> Willow and Michael, of course, head out. Like, oh, the meeting's over. Gotta go. Right? And then it says that she, um, that, well, Willow barely spoke. But I think I got a little smart smile from her. Guys, I replayed that. And y'all let me know in the comments, okay? Please let me know in the comments. Because I replayed that like several times. And it could have been a smir a smudge of a smirk. To a to a polite smirk. I don't or less or just or just a hmm, look at her. Here she go again. <laughs> uh, bless her heart face. <laughs> And if my if, if and guys, what's my opinion on them their relationship? Like Bobby and and Carly, that's a build up because we're not going to even talk about what Nina did recently. Well, up to this point with what with the Michael and Willow situation, we're going to talk about how Nina treated Willow before she even was in the atmosphere of Michael when she just knew her as a teacher to her um, boyfriend's kid. So anyway. I just, yeah, that, that, that's going to be a slow walk. And I agree with Drew, what she, what he told her. So, um, she starts talking about how, should she call her or, or maybe she should text her. And I'm like, where in her face did you see that she wanted you to call or text her? And I like Drew let her know, like, look, <laughs> Willow wants space, okay? Give the girl some space. I feel like if she actually listens to Drew, they, you know, because she got good. I think that, you know what, guys? Let's just round this house. I think Drew and uh, Nina are a good couple. They work off on each other, right? She gives good ideas about this health and wellness thing. Now he's running this whole entire campaign for Or, which is going to make good money for her, the, all of them. Um, he tells her, you know, about chilling out, 
and if she actually listens to him, that'll be, that'll be, a, you know, we'll see. But he does, you know, and he is talking to Willow about her. I mean, I don't know, guys. I, I think crazy shit didn't happen on GH. I mean, they got Sonny and Nina together, okay? That was pretty. Everybody was like, what? Drop, mouth just dropping all over America. <laughs> There's nobody seen that shit coming. Anyway, um, well, you know, once the Nixon Fall story, we all seen it coming. But y'all know what I mean. So, where was I at? So then, oh, but when Drew says something about her barging in without knocking again, I was like, buddy, didn't you just do that the other, what, couple of hours ago, yesterday, two days ago, rug burn time, 45, whatever time? Y'all just don't have no respect for each other's privacy. Y'all just walk in each other's offices. That's because I'm trying to check her. I don't like how Drew treats her like that. That kind of makes me like, dude, you're, you know, don't be a dick, okay? So, um, so, oh my God. So Nina is being a dick. No, she ain't got a dick, but anyway. Nina tells Drew that Carly is making things hard for her with the repairs in her office. <laughs> I'm, and this is why, guys, I don't hate on Nina because I just, I, okay, Cynthia Washros is first of all a phenomenal actress, okay? Um, if you watch her on any, any other movies, she's damn good. I mean, yeah, she's been in a lot of shit. She's damn good, all right? She plays Nina very well because you have to to play somebody to make them talk crap about you. You gotta be doing know what the hell you doing. And she plays Nina to a T, honey. Okay, it, she was. I'm like you. She gonna come in here complaining about the same. And, and the sad thing about it is, there's really probably nothing wrong with the office. Unlike when she said that something was flooding and all that other stuff and kept that girl out of her office for several days or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's just, we just want Nina to own her shit. That's all. I just, I just, okay, I'm not going to say, because a lot of people have their own opinions. I would just like Nina to own her shit. Yes, I did it. What you going to do? Sue me? Fight me? <laughs> what you going to do? nothing <laughs> and it's going about like i don't care but she puts this victim card and that's what drives me crazy but anyway and uh i got receipts on the victim cards but anyway so where were we at so drew brings it up like really nina hey what do you think she got it from okay dirty pool is dirty pool baby and she then says that her and drew are on the same team and i was like yeah the rug burn team and she asked, what is he going to do about Jason and Carly screwing them over? And I'm sitting here looking like, aren't you tired of this? Aren't you tired, baby? Don't you want something else to bitch about? Don't, don't, isn't there something else you can be doing? Shouldn't you be working on a relationship with your kid? Why are you worried about Carly? Carly is not worried about you. Girl, get you some business. And that's, this is what I'm talking about, Girl. You still on the same shit. You lost everything and you still, you ain't learned. But anyway, the Nina Revenge Tour is ongoing. And she lost her man, kids, grandkids, but still, here we are. Drew ain't interested and reminds Nina it was her that put him in prison. Well, actually, Drew, she technically did not put you in prison. You signed up for that shit when you, you know, co-signed with Carly. But, I, you know, whatever. For story's sake. And then Nina brings up how she saved him from his untimely divorce by sending him to prison. And somehow, some way, this leads to her saying something, him locking the door, and them getting busy again. And I'm telling you, that they're finding way more creative things to get busy and yes it's hot and steamy not a lot of passion no maybe i don't know they don't sh they don't show those things but the wall actually was pretty hot okay yeah I, I i'm just gonna say they are so hot together their chemistry is off the fucking chain i really want this to turn into something real 
Don't come after me, guys. I know. Y'all gonna be like, Tawari, how could you say that? I don't know. Okay? Maybe I'm just tired. That's it. Just, just blame it on the tired. It's like 1 o'clock my time, so I'm just tired. Yeah, guys, 1 a.m. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and scoozy on over to the Metro Court. So John finds... We're going to title this one Pissy John. Because that's all John is. John is just one pissy ass man. He just make piss a lot. He just walking around just pissy at the world. Just just, just pissing on the world. He's just a mad man. <laughs> and he, now he's pissy because he finds out about Jason giving the hotel back to Carly. And he, I don't like either you're mad or you're jealous. I don't know which one it is, but neither are becoming John. And Carly was feeling the vibe, too. And I'm like, for real, sis? Because so was I. I'm sitting here like, what the hell wrong with you? Mad old motherfucker. Because yeah, a girl tried to be, let me be great, motherfucker. Anyway. John finds Carly and Jason's uh, relationship confusing. I just put that in there. That has nothing to do with the scene. And I and I added it. And we all do. We all do. We, we all find it quite confusing. <laughs> Everybody, the soap people, everybody. And Carly tells Bus John out about knowing what happened with her in the SEC. Because she's like, I know you know. He's just like, oh, well, you, yeah. Boy, don't play me. He asks why she accepted it from Jason. And she tells him because that was the one thing that he could fix. And you know what, guys? I'm glad they rationalized this a little bit of why he did it and why she accepted it because it did seem kind of weird. They discuss him going through this. Uh, Carly brings up the fact that he he was going he, that he went through some things while he was gone, and he's like, "How do you know that, Jason? Tell you that?" I'm like, "Such a petty little bitch. No, petty bitch. He did not. I can see it in his eyes because I'm his homie. We we're like this." We almost got like this, but my, you know, my husband came home, but anyway, <laughs> John, I don't know, John is just, John is just mad, John, and you can tell John was mad how he came in there talking to Jason, I wanted, to, I wanted Jason just to land his ass right on the ground, I wanted him to land him around the ground. Anyway, and, hey, we want to talk about that right now, because we are at the Corinthos Coffee. And Anna goes to see Jason for a debriefing about Valentine's slimy ass being involved in Pikeman. That said it. And I'm just going to say I love Fanola. And uh, I love her. I just love Fanola. She drives me insane with some of her daffiness. But her and... Uh, I can't think of Jason's first name, Steve. <laughs> they played so well together. They really did. Anna tells Jason about the old days of the WSB with Brennan and Valentine being buddies. And Jason's actually shocked, like, because she's like, oh, you didn't know that Valentine was in the WSB back in the day? He's like, no. And I'm like, w why, Anna? W anyway. Anna tells him that Brennan used the stolen money to start P Pikeman. And I was so sad when they finally just wiped out Alcazar <laughs> all together. I was just so hoping. But, guys, who's buying Cassidy and Allen? We know now it's not uh, it's not Alcazar. And it don't seem like Valentin got a house for him and his daughter. So who's buying Valentin? Uh, who's buying? Ooh, what if it was, what if it was Pikeman buying the what if it's Pikeman buying Cassadine Island? And they're going to turn that to their private ops and... Ooh! What if that's who bought it? Ooh, 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 ooh. They're going to make that their new private ops. That's going to be their headquarters. Well, then why would they need the ports? They can just bolt off of, the, off of Cassadine Island. I don't know. But anyway. That would be interesting. I'm, one, I'm hoping they do not drop that storyline. But where was I at? And tells me this. And uh, tells Jason about Valentine going to uh, Sunny about the, uh, starting the Pikeman shipment. She ain't buying. She ain't buying it, but didn't put. She ain't buying that Valentine is not uh, 
part of it, but and she's not buying that Valentine is innocent, but didn't push him on it. And we go and man, uh, you know what, guys? Do I? Let me see. And okay, so okay, okay, so she does. She knows that him and Brendan were close. I'm not even gonna read the notes on this, and I'm just gonna look down a little bit. She knows that him and Brendan were close, and she's like, you, you can't. You know, I thought about it. Yeah, they were close. They were like best buddies. But the but when she said and this 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 hit hit home for me too, that when she looks at him, she sees Char. And he's a father first. So every time she looks at him, she's reminded of how her her you know her shooting. Pow pow powing pew pew pewing at um at little mama. And I was like, that's where she. Cause I was trying to, I was when she said that she was compromised. I was like, "How are you compromised? You don't even like this dude no more." But then when she brought the Char situation, and I really like the fact of Jason trying to be there, for, not, like, not trying, but being there for her and telling her, "Look, it was dark. You don't know what I, you don't know what I, situation I would have been." And she said, "You would have never done that. You would have never just shot into a, you know, a dark room." And I kind of started thinking, "Did was Alcazar room dark when he went in there?" <laughs> Cause I think that's how it happened with Alcazar, right? And then, and then my hopes started coming for Alcazar to come back. So I was like, "Ooh, are they talking about that?" Because Jason actually that kind of did happen with the Alcazar shooting, as far as I can remember. I'm gonna have to look it up again. But yeah, mm, mm. anyway. But yeah, let me. Where was I at? Did I leave anything out? She tells him about the Charlotte, uh, the Charlotte incident, and, and how he wouldn't have done that. And, but yeah, Anna said that she can't look at Valentine without thinking about Charlotte. And I was like, that is some real shit. And she's putting the investigation at risk. She is. She is. But I, I gotta say, she's saying that, but at the same time, she went in there and tied the bandit, tie um tied all loose ends with uh Jason. Told him everything that he needed to know. Jason tells her that he will help her with Valentine and that he does trust her judgment, even if she doesn't. And Jason's gonna talk to Dex. That's going to be interesting. So hopefully they can get they can start nilling it down. And I'm hoping that they can break Ava with this crap because they need Sonny fully met it. I would rather Sonny be pretending like he's not met it anymore than being full, not met it. That's just ugh, Ava's got to wake the hell up. But anyway, um, just when John comes in all hot and bothered and. Rah! I, guys, it was almost like a. It was like he was just. I couldn't even hear half of what he was saying, and he's mad at Jason for not having any info on Pikeman, and threatens to have Carly arrested, arrested, and losing the hotel. And I was like, "You is a petty bitch." I mean, you is a petty bitch. You purposely mentioned her losing the hotel again after you just got through smiling in this woman's face. Ugh. I don't, oh my gosh, y'all better keep him away from Carly, okay? I am a Carly girl, okay? You keep that low-life, scum-sucking pig snout. I sh I'm not calling him that because he's a cop that just came out. I apologize. But you keep that motherfucker away from my girl. The hell? I was like, he got really petty. He got petty bitch energy right there. Right there. That, oh, I'm going to take her and she will go back to jail and da-da-da. Right in front of Anna. And it was like, well, damn. Angry man much? And she says something about how, you know, I can tell you don't like how you're treating him. Um, you know, treating him like this. And he's like, right, we just got to get the job done. We just got to get the job done. Well, do the job, bro. Uh, you do the job then. You putting somebody else's life in danger and and then threatening somebody you up there flirting with and you just petty. You, he just did all of that because he was mad because he, Jason's did something for Carly and he likes Carly. John is a, a is a Mitch. Oh my goodness. Ava goes to see Nicholas. Guys, I was shocked about this one. Okay. <laughs> Cause I was like, why is Valentine going to see, <laughs> so to see Nicholas? This is so weird. We're going to label this one. She's like, how are you? And he's like, I'm incarcerated. We're going to label this one. I'm incarcerated. And I'm sorry, guys. I Seeing Nicholas in that orange jumpsuit. 
if this would have been around the Sean time, I would have loved all of this, okay? If Sean Butler could be here while Nicholas is in jail, I would love this. I would be choo-chooing it on and screaming and singing hallelujah, happy days, okay? But Sean Butler's not on here, so to me, this is just a waste of energy. They have a multi-zillion dollar man in jail with nobody to really point fingers at. And a witness that they could probably break in half with just putting her on the stand because Elizabeth ain't going to hold up. She ain't going to hold up. All you got to do is get his auntie involved, Alexis. She about to get her law license. I'm hoping that be her first case is getting him out of jail because this is stupid, okay? He needs to be home with raising his son. There's not... We now... We, Trina... We got Trina about to be a nanny. Get we free Nicholas. Get him writers fix this. Now fix it. Okay, please. This is ridiculous. So um Laura told Nicholas about her about Ava living with something. <laughs> like look at Laura being messy, okay? And Ava tells Nicholas about her safety uh about her safety precaution evolving into the best it's ever the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> and there were words like hard to define, toxic, mutual support, relying on each other, happy to be on the same side tossed around there. And Nick Nicholas admits to Ava that he is jealous and she's not in love with Sonny, but does find him attractive. And who knows? Feelings could develop. And I was like what? Ava? What? Girl, are you serious? Oh, you dumb girl. You about to fall, girl. You about to fall. She talks about how happy Avery is to have both her parents in the home. And she hasn't seen her this happy. And I wrote, and you guys let me know what's your opinion on this. So why are you going to break this girl heart again? Why are you going to break this girl heart again by doing this to her dad with this medication, Ava? Why, Ava? This is the same bullshit you did with Kiki. You would get right up to the point where you and Kiki are solid and then you would do some dumb shit and destroy their relationship over and over again. And I don't want to see Ava do the same thing with Kiki to do this to Avery. I don't want to see this shit. I don't want to see it. I, want, I was really hoping that, you know, we could still have Ava Jerome be Jerome. Yeah. We could still have Ava having her own interior motives. But this, this, this is... She has more to lose than any other player in the book. She has way more to lose. Her daughter. Her daughter. Sonny could be like, you know what? Since you knew about my medication and you play me like this, me and Donna, me and me and Avery are gone. Can't do nothing about it. He could take her daughter and raise her somewhere with some other woman. Nina, being the mama, if you want. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ava has too much to lose on this, and I am so mad about this. Ava brings up always skating on thin ice with Sonny. And now she doesn't have to. Until he finds out. And then it ain't going to be thin ice you're going to be on. It ain't going to be no ice at all. You're just going to be in hot boiling lava water. Ava swimming in hot boiling lava water. Nick's like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I hear all that happy, tappy, wappy talk. You like getting you like you getting off on being on the inner sanctum of Sonny's world, of having his trust and his confidence and leaning on him and him believing in you. And she likes this so much. She likes this so much that she is willing to overlook her daughter's happiness. Because that's her father. She's willing to overlook her daughter's safety, her daughter's safety because if Sonny's off kilt and can't and he ain't on his medication how is he gonna protect avery and, and, and avery how's he gonna protect you ava unless you really never thought that he could protect you in the first place i don't know i avery hey this is making me mm. and she's like well damn right i do and i'm like girl your fall gonna be bigger than nina's Ava brings up looking with her nose pressed up against the window, being ridiculed and despised by everybody that was in Sonny's world. And I'm like, well, damn, did she forget why? Morgan, that's why. And once they find out about this, what do you think's going to happen? She talked about, um, hold on, I'm gonna, let me 
let me slow down. Nina brings up Nina, not Nina. <laughs> when he brings up, I'm like, well, Nina didn't do anything to you. Well, recently. <laughs> And it was Nina was like Nina's collateral damage. She she can't love Sonny. She can't love Sonny better than me. Cause I can love him. I can love him better than she can. Mary J. Blyster. <laughs> anyway, um Ava loves that she's making Carly miserable. And I wrote, because fucking her kid and messing with her kid's medicine wasn't enough. Wasn't enough for you, Ava? What you did to Morgan was was apprehensible. It was, it was pretty disgusting. The fact that you were sleeping with him and you know that was your daughter's, that was, that was even more disgusting. But you were also messing with this woman's kid. So the fact that she's sitting here, I just get so hot off making Carly miserable. And I'm thinking to myself, you do know this is not long lasting. You do know there's going to be a moment when Carly is going to be, and she ain't even got to be with Sonny anymore, shutting the door in your face. This is going to happen. This where Where's the win for you in this, boo-boo? It's, it's a, oh my gosh. <sighs> but Ava likes being in charge of the entry and tells Nick she's um, about Sonny's meds. And no, of course, she didn't do it, but she's going to find out who is doing it. And she will have his back because he's vulnerable. And I'm like, he's only vulnerable because he doesn't have his meds. You are literally making this man vulnerable. You're making him unable to protect you and your daughter. You're making him unable to protect himself. Thanks to your foolishness, he's going to end up in jail. And I almost would think that's what Ava wants. Nick freaks out on Ava and tells her. Frick, oh, yeah, Nick, Nicholas, of course, gets upset. He's like, what do you mean you haven't told Sonny about the medication? Are you crazy? <laughs> when he finds out, he's not going to find out. I didn't have anything to do with it, but he's going to find out that you knew about it, you dits. And Nick, Nicholas tells her that she's playing with fire. And she tells him that he's always undermesting her. And, he's, and she says, I didn't know that you care. And he's like, I do care. And she says she knows what she's doing. I was like, girl, you have no idea. You have no idea what you're doing. First of all, you only see Sonny for his bits. It was Carly actually living with Sonny when he was going through his bipolarness. And he's she don't she don't know what she she is so in love with power that she ain't even thinking about the safety uh, or, or her daughter watching her father break down and go to pieces like that. She, this is how much in love with power this woman is that she is on the same self-destructive path 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 as nina and i can't wait for them to both of them to be in the left in the dust clutching on each other's pearls because that's all they gonna have valentine goes to see brennan guys and I guess now Brennan, he's a trusted man. He could just walk around uh, uh, <laughs> with Valentine's money. He didn't buy his way through there. And I said, oh, so we have another paid, another bot warden. Um, Laura, Jordan, um, police commissioner, y'all need to take care of these wardens for the PCPD. You let one already escape to Texas that was helping out Cyrus. That, not, nothing never happened with that. And now you got another one up in there that's not doing no good. But anyway, Valentine updates Brennan on Sonny, his isolation, and the only person him trusting is Ava. Brennan congrats Valentine on his work with Sonny's medications and the fact that nobody knows. Well, actually, somebody does know, but this person has their stick up their butt, so she's going to have to have a, a rude awakening. She's going to take the big, I mean, Ava's going to lose so much more than anybody. 
They discuss Alan Jacobs, which somebody let us know that Alan, uh, a.k.a. Jason, Jason took on the name of his father, Alan and Jacob for Jake. I, that was so cool. I didn't even know that. Who had a fake I, that his and his fake whose fake ID? <laughs> yes, guys, I put it. Fake ID was so good that it had to be the CIA. <laughs> Valentine tells Brendan that Sonny and Jason are currently at odds and is almost at an all out all out war. And the plan is to eliminate Jason and and put the blame on Sonny. And thanks to Ava not being honest about the medication, this plan, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen, but could almost happen. And I, I love how they build it up like this. <laughs> Brennan brings up Anna, her closing in and knowing the history and knowing him and uh, Valentine's history, the finding of the money, the funding money for Pikeman, that she just needs to put the pieces together. Surprise! She already has. That delicious, beautiful woman. Valentine says Anna ain't going to be a problem. He knows how to play her. So this sorry bastard is going to do the used char. <laughs> That's the only thing he has. That's the only play thing he has is char. I'm like, you are a dirty piece of crap, Valentine. Brennan threatens Anna to Valentine. And tells him that he needs to stay away from her, or right, because he's going to risk giving himself up. And I agree with uh, with Brennan on that because Valentine is a little too cocky with thinking that he that Anna does not hasn't figured things out, which Anna already has. So there we have it. Um, that is the end, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Sorry once again for the lateness. I just got so much going on, but I still wanted to deliver. The show was so awesome. I'm hoping that I can give you guys a little bit of show. Not Probably not as long as today's was, but I'm definitely going to try to put something out there tomorrow for you guys. You guys are super freaking amazing, and I truly appreciate it each and every single one of you. You guys have an amazing um, day tomorrow and sleep well tonight. Talk to you soon.